everywhere he goes in you know little vials, little you know little contraptions he carries around with him, and it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit of intention, a little bit of commitment. Everybody brought their toothbrush with them, I'm sure. Brought their toothpaste or whatever it is that you clean your teeth with, right? Why? Because it's important. Yeah, we carry around little vials of like, our culture carries around little vials of poison with them. Yeah. Little cancer-causing, toxic little vials of poison that they spread on their skin and they consume. If you can carry around little vials of poisonous things, you can carry around good things. You can just switch. You can just switch, put it in glass. So look, water, the food that you eat, earth, wild earth, wild water. How about wild air? How about, how's the air in here? How's the air in those, uh, how's the air in those uh, elevators? <laughs> I think they're pumping something in those elevators, actually. <laughs> rugged in those elevators. Okay, so look, you know, we're all thankful for this building. This isn't a slight against this building, but let's talk a little bit about modern architecture. You get a big castle of a building like this. You got an area at the center of the building with no windows, which means some of the air in this room has been in this room since this place was built. But she's gone, right? They, we breathed it already. And you go into an office building, and the people there behind the desk, the DMV. <laughs> right? Like, dead and irritable. Why? Because there's no chi in the air. There's no chi. Now look, chi in the air is not just some kind of like, oh, it's chi. Look, it's called ions. It's really in the air. It's an electrical principle. It's a negatively charged particle. And it's, a, it's electrical. And you can breathe that in and take that into your organism. Where do you find it? I'm going to tell you. You guys want to know the best place to find really wild air? The kind of air that can heal you? Because you don't just need food. You don't just need water. You need all of the elements. Where do you get wild air? Here's the best, most ionized air. One, the ocean. Crashing ocean waves on the, on the shore, correct? Unbelievable. When that salt water moves with the force that it does. If you get, I live near the ocean. I go a few times a, a month and I just stand there and breathe. Reef, just like eating, just like drinking water, we got to breathe good air. It's important. Two, forest. The forest. Why? Because the trees. Three, the mountaintops. If you can get into mountains, even sometimes, that air will rebuild you. But it's important to understand that there's no chi inside the kind of buildings we've been building. You guys want a strategy to um, optimize the air in your house? I thought about this for a long time. I've been practicing this for a while. I kind of this is a great strategy, by the way. Okay, you need a few things. One, a HEPA filter. What's a HEPA filter? It's a high efficiency particulate air filter. And you can use it anywhere, any city. We have filtration in my own apartment, and it's it's phenomenal. Little device, you can spend a lot, you can spend a little. Get a HEPA filter. Why? Because how many people have seen when the light comes in at a funny angle through your window, and you see all the dust motes? What's dust made out of? Dead skin. Blech. Dead skin, dust mites. Okay. And you, you only run this, it's, a, it's kind of a big filtration unit, but you only runs it, what, like, about like an hour a day, I think. No, you, sometimes not for weeks. You don't need to run it often, you don't need a big one, the filters will last you a long time as long as you've got an intelligent strategy. Now, here's what you do. Get yourself a head of filter. Turn that on. Why? Because your lungs are a filter. And if you see all that dust when that light comes in, that means the whole room is full of that. And your lungs are the filter for that. You deposit all that dust and dust mites into your lungs. Ugh. Ugh. How do we avoid that? Just turn on this filter and you suck all that right in. And it locks up in the filter and it's done. Stage one. Two, I have an ionizer. An ionizer is like, remember on the TV, TV they had those ionic breezes? It's the metal plates. That thing produces, uh, that's not my favorite model, but, the, but those produce ions. Elect negatively charged electrical particles. Here's what those do. And ozone, by the way. They produce ozone. You guys smell ozone after it rains? There's that amazing smell of freshness as O3, O4, O5, O6. Those ozone molecules are brought down to the surface of the earth, and you can smell them, and they clean the air by oxidizing pathogenic organisms. You bring that into your house with an ionizer. Those negatively charged particles will grab onto positively charged particles. In other words, pathogenic things. Grab them, lock them up, and drop them to the floor. So you won't have all that dust anymore. What do you recommend, actually, for a, a particular one that you use? I really like one called Heaven Fresh with the UV light in it. Do you like the Airwise? Yeah, I do like the Airwise. There, there's, a, there's so many out there, but I've got a couple. I've got one for my car, one for my house, one I wear around my neck on airplanes. Here's how they work. They put out a field of negatively charged particles. Remember that things like dust, those things are positively charged. If you have negatively charged particles around you, they'll lock those up and drop them away. 
you can create, if you got one around your neck, you create a little bubble around your head of negatively charged particles. That's like a force field when you're on an airplane and people are sneezing, people are farting on an airplane, and you're all trapped in that little tin can being irradiated up there. you got to have a strategy, right? So you wear this neck ionizer and that stuff can't get to your face. It's all being blown away on this negatively charged ionic And these tools aren't, aren't very expensive. Yeah, I mean, actually, she, in my view, they're a worthwhile investment because they last for years. You can buy an ionic neck thing at, at Brookstone at the airport. So anyway, you get yourself... <laughs> what? What? Right on. So in my space, right, where I live, I got a HEPA filter and I have an ionizer to add back into my environment negatively charged particles. Then three plants. You gotta have plants. You can go on real, real plants, by the way, not the silk plants. These are real actual plants. You touch them and you can feel. You can Google this on, on the internet. NASA did all kinds of studies to find out what the best plants were for removing specific gases from an environment. Now here's the thing. A HEPA filter pulls particles, so we can't filter gases. An ionizer adds negatively charged particles back in, but it can't remove gases. How do you get old gases out of the air? Plants, they breathe them in, lock them into the soil, and breathe back out what? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. One more piece. It's wintertime where I live, and the windows get shut a lot, right? And the air gets what? Because we have, we cook the air. We cook our air. It's hilarious to me that we cook our air. So what I do is I spray down my heating element with spring water in a glass bottle. I actually have one of these gold rush bottles. I took a sprayer, fit it on the top. That fits perfectly for those little squirt things. I, I've seen you do this many times. And fill it with spring water, and I spray down the air in my room, and I wash the humidity in my room because you know what? You don't want to be breathing zero humidity or 10% humidity because it's dry. You guys have this in the winter time where your nostrils start to get all dried out and mucus membranes dry out because you're not moisture in the air. So I spray the air down. Now this isn't like some big thing that takes me all this time, but every once in a while I flick on that thing. I run my ionizer. I have plants in there. They're doing the passive work. I gotta water them sometimes. And when the air gets dry, I mist it down. To recreate what kind of air? Wild, Wild air. Tropical, actually. Just, it's great. In the middle of the winter, I visit them, and it's going into his room, and it's like walking into a tropical solarium. It's fantastic. This is important, but it's funny that what we're trying to recreate is nature. Vitamin D deficiency is so rampant in North America that it's called a silent epidemic. You know, the, the, the powers that be have said that our requirement for vitamin D is 400 IU per day. Come on. Maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000. See, when you're a child and you don't get enough vitamin D, you get what? Rickets. Rickets, soft bones, right? Bow legs. What do you get when you're an adult and you don't get enough vitamin D? Osteomalacia, bone pain. Now, if you go to your doctor with bone pain, here's what they're going to tell you. you got fibromyalgia, you got chronic fatigue syndrome, it's in your head. If you live in a city like New York, you know, it's like being in a canyon. It's very hard to get direct sunlight because there's gigantic buildings everywhere. Right? Out here, you know, it's much easier. I mean, that was amazing to arrive here from Maine and actually get sun on my face. It felt great. But, you know, where I live, we don't have sun for a lot of the year, not enough to make, to make vitamin D. So you need a strategy around that. But you got to get vitamin D. Who's heard about sun gazing? So it's more than just getting vitamin D. It's also getting harmonic light frequencies from the sun, that giant hydrogen furnace that supplies the life force for all living things in our entire biosphere. 